Welcome back to the Student Hub Live orientation event for uh, ECUS. Now we're going to look at early childhood in this session um, and we're going to have two parts to the session again as we had earlier today. First we're going to take a look at what's there for level one students and then we're going to take a look at level two. And uh, I'm joined in the studio by some colleagues and we're going to take a look at level one first. But Jackie, I wonder if you can first tell us a little bit about who the team are within early childhood and uh, give us an introduction to the area. Um, thank you, Karen. Uh, well, I'm Jackie and I um, lead the programme and the Central Academics are part of a small team based at Walton Hall, but we're part of a larger group of uh, associate lecturers and lots of other um, people who support us in our work and ultimately support the students in their studies. We come from a wide range of different professional backgrounds. Um, we're teachers, nurses, practitioners, um, but what we all share is a, a belief that children are citizens and have a right to be listened to. And uh, we base our uh, curriculum on those beliefs. Perfect. Now we're going to take a look at two of the level one modules. Um, so we have Natalie and Karen who are going to give us a bit of an outline on those. Natalie, you're the module chair for E110. Okay. We've talked a lot about numbers today, so students might get very confused. What is the module and can you give us a little bit of an idea about what it's all about? Yeah, sure. So uh, E110 is Young Children's Play and Creativity. So we explore uh, different aspects of children's play um, and we concentrate on, in the first block of study, what are the experiences of children's play um, in their um, environment with uh, their parents, with their carers, in school environments um, and really concentrating on what does it mean to be able to play for a child and what does that look like in uh, modern childhood. And then in the second block we look at the role of the practitioner and how adults support children and how they can influence children um, in their play decisions and in being creative, creative. Uh, and I think lots of us will remember, uh, you know, being perhaps um, creative as a child or not creative, and that kind of that idea of whether you are able to be creative stays with you as you grow older. And then the third block of study, we look at the different aspects of research relating to children's play. Um, and why play is so important for young children, childhood and going into adulthood and those skills that you learn as a child, those that, that ability to explore, uh, that ability to be curious and creative, how those things can really stay with you into your adulthood and can define who you become. And you've got one of the module books with you. Yes, this is the first module book um, that uh, students study. Uh, we have some fantastic resources within the module materials, including lots of video uh, and case studies and pictures. And we don't just concentrate on children from the UK. Also, children uh, are represented from around the world and different experiences around the world as well. So, Lovely, thank you. Karen, could you talk to us about E109? Um, E109 is exploring perspectives on young children's lives and learning. Um, it's often the first module that students encounter when they come um, to study early childhood at the Open University and um, it's a lovely introduction in block one to really starting off from the child and it's all about the child's perspective and the child's experiences. So we have different um, chapters on um, different theories and ideas to do with early childhood. Um, the child is the centre of the family and what can be learnt within um, family is a really important influence on children's development. Um, child attachments, um, friendships, um, children's rights and so on. Um, and in the second block we explore, we, we go out a layer to the adult's response to young children. So there's lots of um, topics around um, how uh, adults might plan for children's learning. Um, we explore environments like digital learning and outdoor learning, which I know students are engaged in the um, induction activity at the moment, the show and tell, and they're getting into lots of really brilliant, lively debates as to whether modern childhood is more technological than it used to be, what's happened to outdoor learning. So I know they're going to particularly like that, um, that debate within that um, block. Um, we think more about children's rights towards the end of the block because the um, module's very much about listening to young children who, as um, 
agents and participants in their own learning. So that they're, they're very much shaping the world around them through their play, through their creativity. Um, they have lots of different influences on their learning. And then the final block is around more the policy side of things. Um, and we have um, lots of footage from Pistoia in Italy, so very much bespoke international um, footage about childhoods elsewhere, which I know that students really do enjoy um, engaging with. And lots of reflective stuff. Um, students come into the module with lots of different experiences. Some maybe don't work with children, would like to, perhaps their parents, or they're maybe more experienced in working with young children. So it's a really nice um, introductory module for a really diverse range of students. And you've got lots of, I mean, both modules have lots of um, great material, photographs, audiovisual assets, etc. You've got one example to show us with some building blocks and how you've taken an idea of, a, of an image and, and used yes. that to explore different ways of looking at things. Yeah, hopefully on the screen um, students should be able to see there's an image of four children. They're in the block um, area. We have got uh, Jamila, Jamila who's holding the book. Um, she's being a teacher in the school which she often plays in her imaginative role play. We've got um, Lara and Elsa and Eamon there. And um, Elsa's off in the class with, um, pretend to be a class where, with um, Jamila, um, he's got the book about the big family. She's the youngest child um, of a family of five. Um, Elsa often gets a star. Elsa knows lots of words and things. Um, Lara's there. She's Polish. She's been in the nursery for a few weeks. So she's very much part and parcel of that play. It's the first time she's been in that area. And Eamon's got a new baby sister there. He's often falling asleep at the moment because new mm -hmm. baby. So, so we can see lots of different influences on children's learning and development that they bring to their place. So it could be family. And we can see that children very much, they know what they want to play. They've got ideas about um, the world around them. So students might have maybe come to study early childhood mm -hmm. having thought about ages and stages, but we, we're broadening that very much with a sociocultural mm. perspective. So it's children as active um, participants, lots of different influences on their development but themselves um, and how we as adults can listen to young children's perspectives and we can respond in a way that um, values children's rights mm. as Jackie said as citizens um, and support their play and explorations through um, the ways that they choose mm. to tell about their lives and experiences. You mentioned the sociocultural perspective and I wanted to ask how those theoretical ideas informed the way of looking at the world and the module material. So um, that photograph is taken from the um, first um, chapter in block one. So the students will meet those children first of all. Mm -hmm. And what they'll be introduced is to a range of different theoretical perspectives. So going back in time, um, the more kind of ages and stages um, theories that students might be quite familiar with. Um, they may have heard of Piaget, again, quite an age and stage um, perspective, but Piaget very much saw the child as learning through discovery, play, and very active in their own. Own, um, learning and exploration. Um, different ideas about theory in terms of sociocultural perspective. Students might have heard of theorists like Vygotsky and Barbara Rogoff who talked about guided participation. Children's learning is very much a very social activity, learning together. Children can do far more um, with each other, with peers, with adults than they can achieve um, on their own and particularly through play and their own um, choice of ways that they choose to choose to learn. So students will be introduced to um, thinking about children as very much active participants and shaping their own learning and very much the world um, around them. So the way that the module is presented in terms of ideas to students will be very much a socio-cultural feel, mm. feel. So it's listening to young children, it's children's, um, children's agency and um, participation in the social world. Um, and I think in the d debate previously, was talking about not having the answer to things. Mm -hmm. So in practice, we have different tools or theories that help us to guide how should how how can we be um, support a good mm -hmm. early years provision for young children because there's no easy answers. No. It's very complex, and children's lives are very rich and very complex. Well, that's been a wonderful introduction to level one. I'm sorry, it's all we've got time for, and we're going to look at the level two modules as well. But Natalie and Karen, thank you so much for filling us in um, on uh, E110 and E109. Um, we'll take a quick trip to the hot desk and see HJ and Scott, how everyone is at home. Well, we're all doing well. There's yeah. uh, quite a few people on E109 that have joined us as well, isn't there? Some yeah, people who have done it mm. or starting. Um, we did go a little off topic. We were talking about some of the snacks we've been having and uh, 
that they should do uh, like special dish and massive size snacks, which I definitely agree with. But um, going back, there was to, some debate. About there that. was some debate, yeah. yes. But, but um, there's some there's an there's particularly a new person that's mm. this is sort of her first event is sort of new to the OU and is very glad to have the uh, have you know people sharing their perspectives on the on these modules. Um, she hasn't mentioned whether she's going to be studying those subjects, but. Um, she does. She does seem to be taking it all in, and glad to hear hear from everyone. Mm. And Jane says, uh, related to the session, that uh, rights really to me are served best by respecting our children as individuals, no matter how old they are, and listening to all people is key. And Jane also said as well, although she's looking forward to do E one hundred and nine, before that she did uh, an. A free open learning course, uh, children's perspective on play. So we'll put that link in there because uh, we might want to check that out later on. Excellent. Thank you very much both. Well, we've changed in the studio. We've now got John Parry and Karen Douthwaite um, with us to talk a little bit about Level 2. Um, so uh, John and Karen are the chairs of um, E229, Listening to Children, um, and they're going to explain what we mean by listening to children, because uh, I know my daughter certainly talks a lot, John. <laughs> what do we mean by listening to children? How does, how does that look in a module? I'm glad I was listening to that question because it's quite an uh, involved one, but I'll do my best in, in a short period. <laughs> time. I mean, really, I think it, it's a, uh, something that's evolving. The meaning's evolving. And particularly over the last 30 years, the meaning's changed as to what listening to children means. And that's been driven by um, the United uh, Nations Convention on the Rights of the Children. So it's about children having a right to be listened to about things that are affecting them. So it's about hearing their views. And it's also been driven by a sort of academic development in the field of early childhood. And that's really been around re respecting that children, young, particularly young children, aren't just adults in waiting. They are people who are competent, they're skillful communicators, they experience things themselves, and they make meanings of their own lives. So really, it's very important that we listen to them because we need to engage with that experience because we share their world with them. Mm. And what does that mean then in practice in terms of listening to children when you're working with them? Yeah, what it means in, in practice, I think, it, it comes, comes in in two ways, particularly with very young children. It really means that you have to engage with all children. So we're not just talking about talking to children. It's not just about listening to what they say, because very young children often communicate in myriads of other complicated and wonderful ways, as we know. And it's about engaging with that. So listening is about how do we engage with that and finding out tools to in, engage with that level of communication. And the second thing is probably it's more than just listening to what children think about what should we have for a snack in the setting or what should we be allowed to do more outdoor play or should we have a slide or should we have more ride on toys. It's not about just consultations on uh, a topic where there is an objective. It can be that, but it's not only that. It's something a little bit more fundamental because listening and learning are very connected. And it, because in a participatory way of learning, you listen and respond. So it's about responding to children and engaging with them through play. It's about that sort of listening relationship. So it's really fundamental to listening. And to do that is complicated. And that's what the, the module looks at. It looks at not only the, the tensions and the complications, it sort of looks at the, the methods and, and how, how we go about that. Karen, why is it important to listen to children and what is the impact on children's experiences? Um, so I think if we think of our experiences as adults, if we're in a situation where our voice isn't heard or um, our perspectives aren't really valued, that can really inhibit our participation and it's the same for children. Um, so thinking specifically at the things that we look at in the module, um, we, we follow sort of multilingual childhoods, perhaps where a child is in a situation where the dominant language that's being spoken isn't actually one that they speak themselves. Um, and coming from a, a listening and rights perspective and understanding the child as a very skillful communicator, um, we really respect that they bring a lot of really valuable experiences and, and funds of, of knowledge to their experiences. So. Um, we follow a Syrian refugee child, for example, who joins a, a nursery in Denmark and she doesn't speak Danish. 
Um, and just sort of observing her, she seems to be very much on the, on the outside of what's going on. But actually, when you speak to the pedagogue who's working with her, she's incredibly conscious of what the child's looking at, um, where her attention is, and recognises that she's got her own expertise previously of making friendships and getting involved. Um, and so over time, we see th this child becoming more and more involved. And it's because that pedagogue has kind of respected that space and listened mm -hmm. to the expertise that she brings to that situation. And have we got a clip from that, uh, a still from that uh, material then that you wanted to show? Um, we've got stills from, from the, the, the Danish nursery. Mm. Um, there's, there's an ongoing um, project there that makes use of photography. Mm. So children are encouraged to go and take their own photographs of what's important. Um, and the listening aspect then comes in the sharing. Mm. Um, going back and sharing those photographs with the child and making meaning together. Um, so they bring their expertise um, and the, the educator might then introduce some language of learning and so they make meaning together through that listening process. Um, so other examples are sort of more everyday things, things like, like school mm. for the first time which we know is a very sort of emotionally challenging experience. Um, and so listening in that context might be going and doing a home visit, listening to the parents' perspectives of the child's interest um, and then bringing that into the new context so that gradually the child feels that their, their perspectives are, are brought into that environment and that they're respected and that eases transition for them. So lots of different contexts that we look at for, for listening. And are students encouraged to develop their own listening skills as they're working through the module? Absolutely, um, and that's one of the things that we really hope is that students will become sort of ambassadors, if you like, mm. or listening champions. Um, so we have lots of methods that we've talked about, um, photography, children going and making maps of their setting, um, all kinds of different ways, uh, learning stories, so we might observe a child and write a narrative from their perspective and then share that with them after. So lots of different methods, there's a whole sort of block on methods. Um, and then really I think what we hope is that students will become sort of almost leaders of listening practice. Um, so that's more than just being able to use the methods, it's about being able to encourage student, um, children rather, and, and other adults to listen to each other um, and in, in a range of different contexts. Mm, wonderful. Jackie, how does all of this research and thing, uh, well, a application in, in, inform, you know, teaching and things more broadly? Um, all of the um, curriculum areas, uh, the modules are informed by research and we all have different um, areas of interest. And we um, do um, a great deal of discussion and reflection and sharing of uh, our interpretation of the students' uh, experience and all of us are united in wanting students to have the very best possible experience that they can have. And we, following on from what Karen was saying about uh, listening to children, it's really important that the students listen to each other, learn from each other and develop the confidence to use student forums to um, exchange mm -hmm. ideas and uh, really to, to communicate with each other, but also to communicate with us. Um, we, we're very conscious that many of our students are entering higher education for the first time, and it is like a different language. Mm. Um, but by learning from each other, looking at guidance and all the things that are provided to try and inform students, um, the unfamiliar be can become familiar very soon and there is lots of support there and nobody should feel at sea for too long. They probably will feel a little at sea at first. Um, and what I'm really confident about is, and I can say this because I've been very minimally uh, involved in the production of the modules because I've only been here a relatively short time, but they are the highest quality of materials and our students uh, really give positive feedback about um, the quality of them and the enjoyment of them. Mm. And we know that our students really do uh, have a great sense of satisfaction with their studies. And we know that because they tell us in our mm. um, uh, data and in our feedback. Brilliant. So as part of that, I guess you, what you're saying is, is that, you know, we actively listen to students and the NSS data shows us that, you know, that 
that is respected by students and they felt very heard by that. So you're putting what you practice, what you preach into practice. Absolutely. So that's fantastic. Well, thank you all very much for that introduction um, to early childhood. There's certainly lots to look forward to and Angela and Jane are really looking forward to their module and Kay says she's really enjoying this live event. What a fantastic way to interact with people. Um, and I hope you are enjoying it at home as well. I hope you're talking to other students and sharing your experiences and enthusiasm for your studies. HJ and Scott are going to be feeding back things in the chat, but we don't have time for that right now. We'll include that in our next session where we are going to look at making a difference. This next session will be incredibly interesting because we're going to cover the ways in which the school are involved with outreach projects across the globe and are really making a difference to education um, more broadly than perhaps you know about. So we're going to start with a video on Tess India, which is one of the projects that we're going to include. And I'll be back um, at uh, 2.30 for the Making a Difference video. We'll see you then.